Hi everyone, I'm Faye. Welcome to another video. Today I have a special guest. This is my mum, Jan. Hello. So today, instead of putting makeup on my own face, I'm going to put makeup on my mum's face, which is a little bit intimidating because I am not a makeup artist and she actually was a makeup artist. <laughs> um, so you started working in makeup when you were about 16? 16, yes. I A long time ago. A very long time ago. <laughs> I was the youngest person Revlon had ever taken on as a beauty consultant. So you worked behind there the counter go. at Revlon? I did. I worked in London in uh, quite a number of department stores. Carry on. You can carry on talking. Can I carry on talking? Carry on talking. Yeah. So the department stores I started in were um, places like uh, Derry and Tom's, which doesn't exist anymore. I've literally never heard of that. No, no. Um, I think that is now on Debenhams is on the site. I want eyebrow hair that's just like oh, come no. off and stuck to me. Okay. And I worked in Selfridges and um, and in Topshop on Oxford Circus and. I did that for five years and then I wanted to do something a little bit more involved than just being um, a girl behind a counter. Uh, although in those days, um, when you joined a cosmetic company, you actually had a really long training. I had two weeks training with uh, Revlon in Brook Street and we did not only skincare, makeup, we learned how to do manicure because of course back in the day, Revlon was very well known for nails. I still use a lot of Revlon nail polish, actually. Mm -hmm. I still really like mm -hmm. Revlon nail polish. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. so we've got some primer on. Um, you won't see me, much of me in this. I will be off to the side. You'll just see my hands. But this is Milani Prime Light. And now, Mum wants a more natural, dewy, hydrated, peachy kind of makeup look. I think so. Which Let's is go for the natural du dewy look. It's much more challenging when you've got um, <laughs> when you've got texture on the skin. You have to be really careful with where you put sort of dewiness and anything highlighted because highlight can really just make texture look even more textured. Do you mean so we're gonna be, lines, Faye? Yeah, I do, I do mean lines. <laughs> so we're going to be careful with where we place um, our coverage and where we place our more sort of dewy highlighted areas. To start with, I'm going to do a little bit of people are back. I'm going to do a little bit of colour correcting, so I'm just angling your yeah. head. Mum has some redness around the uh, cheek area here, which are just little broken capillaries. Sadly. Um, we, I won't reveal your age unless you're happy. I really to. don't care, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, I'm 29, so you can try and make a guess. <laughs> I'm How old am I? I've forgotten. I think I'm 68 now. A little bit of... Uh, Colour correction here mm -hmm. on the cheek area before we go in with foundation. Excellent. I was uh, in the business when colour correction came in as an innovation, believe it or not. So I was telling you the story. So I <laughs> moved from being a um, con counter consultant, beauty consultant with Revlon, to then joining Clinique as a travelling consultant, which was going around the country doing promotions. And my very first promotion was in Jersey. And that was quite interesting because I'd not been there since I was a child and it was very, very different. And being a travelling consultant was quite fun because you got to go around the country and uh, promote the product. Um, some of your more older watchers may remember Clinique free lipstick promotion where you attended the counter to, just to get a come on the other side um, a skincare assessment and a free lipstick and then people behind the counter attempted to sell you stuff which they still do they still give you free <laughs> stuff and then attempt to sell you more things uh, just relax your cheek here because I'm going to um, I'm still really into Clinique, so one of the reasons I use so many Clinique products is basically that mum used to work for them, and so when I was about 14, and she took me to get my first like proper kind of skincare, she took me to the Clinique counter, and it's, what, 15 years later, and mm -hmm. I'm still kind of a Clinique devotee, and I still use a lot of their products. Yep, I I do use some myself still. Down there. Okay, 
So to balance out um, coverage with sort of more hydration, I'm going to actually mix two little blobs of foundation. This is the LA Girl Pro coverage and I'm going to mix it with the Kiko highlight. This is a very subtle, more of a base type product that you can also mix into foundation. And then I'm going to apply that combination to most of the face, but then just on this cheek area, I'm going to stick to this alone without the highlight mixed in so that we don't lose coverage on those areas where it's needed. I'm a great advocate of mixing colours together. I used to do that a lot, trying to um, get the right colour for brides. I, um, when they was a little, a little tot, I used to have a small business yes. doing wedding makeups. Mum used to go away on the weekend and do bridal makeup. Me and Dad would go out for the day. I always remember it very fondly because sometimes, you know, when you have one parent that works and one parent that's at home, you spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with the non-working parent, obviously. But it's really nice to get to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with the parent who's also usually at work. Right. So this here is the combination of foundation and highlight just to create a slightly dewier, glowier product that has a little bit less coverage. Is it good for the lines, Faye? <laughs> well, we will have to go in and set it. I know you want, oh, it's in your hair. I know that obviously you want a more natural finish, but we will have to go in strategically with powder and set certain areas of the face where there's more uh, wrinkles, shall we just call them <laughs> what they can, are? Let's just call, call them it, what call they are. Call a spade are. a spade, yes, wrinkles. So whilst I'm working with cream product, we will see that some um, product will settle into the lines on mum's face. But don't worry, before I go in and set things, I will go back and make sure those are all blended out. Right, we have foundation. That to one Faye. side. And we also have a lot of activity going behind us as um, Dad yeah. goes and puts washing out on the uh, balcony. <laughs> yeah. It's a busy apartment today. <laughs> yes, we're in um, obviously in COVID uh, lockdown, which is very sad, but we are occupying ourselves very well, aren't yeah. we, darling? Hey, look up, Sadie. This is a little colour corrector, which I'm just tapping on with my finger a little bit into this inner corner here. I think there's much more ability these days to go and find out um, professional tips and hints for good makeup than when I was um, first doing beauty. Yeah, I mean, the internet is obviously a great resource for mm. everyone to go and learn and look up how you use any old product. Wasn't there back in the day? Nope. Okay. Let's use a little extra concealer, just a couple of areas, just a little extra on the nose. Shading to make my nose look smaller, hey? <laughs> <laughs> we can try. <laughs> Running family joke. Okay. I'm also, where did I put those baby buds? Oh, they're over there. So what I'm gonna go and do is just, mum has 
a little mole here on the cheek and to make it look a little bit less makeupy and a little bit more natural I'm going to take the concealer or foundation rather just off this area so that it shows through as it naturally would if you didn't have a ton of product <laughs> on the face there and then that makes it look just a little bit more a little bit more natural that that is poking through I'm now going to go in with a little bit of bronzing bronzing and contouring nice bit of bronzing and contouring that place so just bear with me I'm going to pop this onto the face And this is more of an emollient consistency type of bronzer and contouring stick because you wanted more of that glowy look i'm going to use something of this texture around the forehead and face towards the camera back. Okay, I'm going to go in with a sponge, just blend this all out. It's getting stuck in your hair. It's a problem with mum having short hair, is it's very hard to keep it completely back and out of the way. I've tried my best with some clips and various other products. Unfortunately, grey hair is a bit spiky too, so it, it tends just... to sort of spring out from behind a headband. You'll get there in the end, Faye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a bit more directly onto my sponge. Okay, face me for a second. Right, relax your face. It all feels very nice. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go with a little bit more of a more pigmented contour now. This is from NYX. And I'm applying it onto the back of my hand rather than directly onto the face. I'm going to pop a little bit of concealer on a small amount of pigmentation that's just on the forehead there, right in the centre. That's a problem when you get old, you do get variable skin tones, pigmentation, broken veins. Okay. A sad but true fact of age. So you wanted me to see if I could make the nose look a little smaller. Oh, you could do that, Faye. So, face me. I'm taking a small amount of contour product on a concealer brush. The tip of your nose is also not quite straight. <laughs> Don't know no, how that no one's nose is completely straight. <laughs> Obviously, you look a little bit crazy at the moment. No change there, then.
Okay, I tried my best. <laughs> I'm sure it will look better. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Nose contouring isn't really my forte. I have quite a pointy nose already. Mine doesn't really need, <laughs> need contouring. So it's not something I normally do. Mine definitely needs contouring. But let's okay. see. Let's add a little concealer under the eyes. Just relax the cheeks for me. This is, this is your own concealer, so I'm just like flopping it on with that applicator rather than going on the back of my hand yeah. first. Keep facing the camera. <laughs> okay. We're going to blend this out with our little egg sponge. All these shape sponges are great now. The best we got were wedges. Yeah. When I was doing it. Way before the invention of the beauty blender sponge. Oh, absolutely. No, I think they're really great. And we are also going to apply a little cream blush, seeing as this is a more glowy natural look and cream blushes just look a little bit more dewy and natural than a powder we want to avoid powders as much as possible basically is what we're doing sinks into the lines fairly, we need it? we need the powder to set things so that the cream products don't crease mm. in the lines but if you use a lot of powder it can look heavy and it can look dry and you mm. want something a little bit more dewy and hydrated so i'm doing my best to create that for you thank my you. dear thank you darling and this is a really nice cream blush from Gosh. You know, Faye, while we're doing this, we ought to talk about look good, feel better. We should. Do you want to tell everyone what that is? Yes. I don't know whether people are aware, but if you go on to the internet, you'll find a charity called Look Good, Feel Better, which is a charity supported and actually set up by the beauty business. And I'm a volunteer with Look Good Feel Better at Addenbrooke's Hospital. And what we do is we have um, sessions at the Maggie Centre for women who are undergoing uh, chemotherapy. And we do beauty and makeup in a two hour training session. It's, it's lovely, it's a bit of fun, as well as showing people how they can put their eyebrows back if they've lost their eyebrows which yeah, often does happen with chemotherapy and um, how they can help their skin which often will go through a very red very sore phase with chemotherapy and it's a really wonderful thing to do all the products are donated by a large number of the cosmetic companies and you have to be something like a beauty consultant or someone who is qualified and works in the beauty industry in order to volunteer. So I can't volunteer. Which is such a mom, shame. But mum goes and volunteers, don't you? Yes, but I can't at the moment because, of course, with the current situation, uh, people who are undergoing chemotherapy are very, very vulnerable. And so all those activities have closed down right across the country. And I think there's um, I think probably more than 100 locations in hospitals now that do look good, feel better. Right, I'm going to powder your face. I'm going to need Thank to you. relax. I'm going to need to relax and stop talking so I can blend out I'm relaxed. the creases here. Just relax your eyebrows down a little bit. There we go. So I'm just going in and making sure that where the product has settled into any little fine lines, we're going to blend that out. I'm actually going to take a little brush, I think, and just make sure we haven't got too much product settling into little crevices. Okay. Whoa, we so tied gonna, a settlement into a crevice, Faye. Yeah, I'm gonna work and set as we go along so that as soon as all those creases are blended out, I'm setting the area so they, they don't come back. Well, that would be brilliant. Don't raise your eyebrows. <laughs> don't raise your eyebrows. That's exactly what I don't want you to do right now. I find it very difficult to keep a straight face, Faye. I know you do. I know it's a big effort. Terrible. Okay, so you look up for me. I'm going to go in and make sure we re blend 
all of the under eye concealer that we put down just so that again we're not setting in lines that we don't want to be emphasized look up is that the powder you gave me Faye? yes this was something that got donated to you oh me. i do like a donation to me <laughs> okay close your eye i tend to get some of face rejects you do there's nothing wrong with this powder i just got a different powder that i liked a bit more that's the only thing that happened Shame your dad can't take me out somewhere, Faye. I know, we're doing all our makeup, got nowhere to go. Absolutely. We'll have to have a nice dinner at home. Okay. Who's, who's cooking tonight? No idea. <laughs> Okie dokie, let's just make sure this is blended. So I hope you can see, if you turn your head, I've left this area here where I put the liquid blush and also that stick more glowy bronzy highlight. I've left that unpowdered so that it has some kind of a sheen because mum doesn't have any lines. I've powdered obviously where these little lines are up around the eyes and then around the nose here and around the jaw. But then this bit I've left to look a little bit more natural. Right, uh, I should probably tidy up a bit before we move on to the next thing. Okay, now that we've got the base down, we're gonna move on to brows, eyeshadow and lips. Now, again, you wanted a more sort of natural daytime look, so we're not going to go heavy in on the eyes. I mean, mum also, so if you see mum's eye shape is quite different to mine. So I have a lot of space here between the crease of my eyelid and my eyebrow. Whereas mum has very deep set eyes and has less space up here. So there's less area to blend out that eyeshadow. If I blended it out as much as I do on me, it would be into your eyebrow because our, our eyes are quite different shapes. So we're just going to work with that. Um, first of all, I'm going to pop a little bit of moisturiser on your lips. Got to smush, smush, smush it in. Just so that when we come to put some lip on, your lips aren't too dry. Okay, we'll just let that sink in. This is the Clinique All About Lips, which was sadly discontinued. Um, but I still have some and it's really good. Okay, we're going to do the brows next. So if I just brush these through. I'm going to use a brow pencil to fill in a little bit. This is Espresso from NYX and it's a dark brown. Because although you do have some greys, you still have very dark hair where you do have your original hmm. hair colour. Your hair colour is, is very dark. So I'm going to darken up the brows a little bit. You're a bit like me in that your natural brow hair is lighter than your head hair. Hmm. And I always struggle with this because if I put in colours into my brows that actually match my natural brows, they look lighter than they should do. But that's because my brow hairs are just like really light. So when I was an artificial blonde, I just left my brows alone and everyone thought I was a natural blonde because <laughs> my eyebrows were so light in comparison to my usual very dark hair colour. Because this hair colour I have at the moment is mine is completely, completely natural. I haven't got any dye in at the moment. It's the Irish in your face. <laughs> well, you've got dark hair too and the no, Irish comes from that size. So. <laughs> that's true. <sighs> and I have no Irish in me. Well, we don't know really, do we? 
I think pretty much every English version is an origin. Although you're a southerner, so it's not so much. Yeah. My dad's side of the family are from the Liverpool area. If you're from the Liverpool area, you probably have some Irish in you. I think when we did that um, history research phase, we discovered that we are, my side, pretty much agricultural labourers way back to the um, 17th century I think we went that far back we did go we quite a long way lowest back. of the low we did go a very long way back um yeah it wasn't the most fascinating family history ever was it no the but, names were quite interesting though but I mean when you do your family history you're like choosing every single branch that you get to of husband and wife you're only following one so what you actually find out is very little and you could spend basically your entire life following every single branch mm. to find out why you are. You absolutely are. could. Yeah. Now, let's have a look at what eyeshadows we have. So I have my little magnetic palette here, filled with pinks, peaches and other types of neutral colours. Uh, we're going to stay away from shimmers because, like I said, when you have any wrinkles on the eyes, any kind of textured skin, shimmer really, really shows that up. So enjoy your glitter whilst you're young is the message. Because <laughs> once you get old, you won't be able to enjoy it so much anymore. I mean, you can, I and mean, there's no reason why you couldn't, but you just have to be prepared for it to accentuate, accentuate some of your lines if you do mm. use it. Um, I never use shiny eye makeup anymore. Do you recognize this eyeshadow? I absolutely do. So <laughs> I have this eyeshadow, which is the oldest thing in my whole makeup collection. Because the, the, one of the reasons I got into makeup was that mum had lots and lots of old samples and things like that that were in a big box. And when I was a kid, I, would, I was allowed to get this box down and play with it. And I did things, you know, like paint my entire face red with lipstick and other silly things like that. <laughs> and before I got into applying makeup properly. But this eyeshadow is so old. It was in mum's sample collection when I was a child and I still have it. Which probably isn't very hygienic, but it's only a powder. I can't even remember which make I it was. I think this might be Jermaine Monte. Well, Jermaine Monte? I'm not even sure that brand exists anymore. It, I'm not sure. It, it was the one I worked for after Clinique. I, I, I don't think it's ever. I don't. I'm, I'm not. I heard anything from it in a very long time, so I'm not sure it exists. No, I think. I think it. Um, it might be in France, but it's certainly not know. in the UK anymore. Right, so we are going. We're going to use that one for old times' sake. Oh, <laughs> I feel nostalgic. But first, I'm going to go into this. Nude by Kiko. Just tap that a bit. Close your eyes. Yes, I did Body Shop Direct for a while, didn't I, Faye? And there was a good collection of stuff from there that was left over for a very long time, yeah. which you played with. <laughs> yeah, I used to play with all of this really old makeup, Clinique, and all sorts of things. Are you right? I have this lovely picture of you doing my lipstick, Faye, when you were about five. Yeah, Mum used to let me apply the lipstick. She was going out. I mean, mum, when I was growing up, mum was always a kind of person who, you know, you basically put your face on every day. Exactly the same. You you do your makeup, but you do it the same every day. And you, you've done it the same for as long as I can remember. I have. I think you go on autopilot, especially when you, you know, you've got kids or you're working or what have you. You find a look that that you're happy with, that you're comfortable with, and you just stick to it, but it can get a bit boring. Now I'm using some of this brighter orange. Enjoy. Okay, we're going to transition to more of a pink shade now. I'm going to take this shadow here, it's just a plain pink matte. And I'm going to use a smaller brush, I have one. I do. Close your eyes for me.
least I'm not backing off though. I remember when I used to do wedding makeups or makeups in store, you uh, approach someone with a brush <laughs> and they'd be going further and further away and it was sometimes quite difficult to get them to be <laughs> calm and relaxed so that you could actually do their makeup. Just blending the powder a bit. I really? think maybe the reason I got rid of this powder is because it flashes back a little bit. I can see like... It's a bit slightly sparkly, is it? I can see like weird white patches. This is Maybe this is the reason that I didn't want this powder anymore and I asked you if I wanted it. Oh, I've not had like a problem with it. I've been using it. I know, but we've got this, we've got like a ring light uh, and it, it shows up sins. It's the problem with these lights. It shows up all your sins. And I feel like maybe this powder flashes back a little bit. Like <gasps> if I took a flash photography picture. I think it might show up a little bit strange. Don't, let's take a flash okay. photography picture. No then. flash no photography. photography. <laughs> um, I'm going to use a little bit of that really old Jermaine Monte shadow just for the sake of it because it's memory been lane, there yeah. for so long. Where's your eye for me? Okay. And we're going to take a little bit of a lighter shade, but still a matte, still a matte for the inner corner, just to bring a little bit of light there. Where's your eye for me? And then we're gonna pop a little bit of shadow on the lower lash line as well. If I can where I just put my brush down. Where's the thin one gone? Ooh, oh, it's there. It's there, it's there ah. it is. We're going back in with a little bit of the matte pink. Look up for me. Keep looking up. And then a little bit of the first shadow, this peachy nude colour. Look up for me. Just to blend that out. Look up again. Look up again. Okay, so coming along is it? It is coming along. We're gonna put some setting spray on now. Ooh. If you close your eyes for me. Oh, that's chilly. <laughs> this is the Make It Dewy by Milani. We're going to pop something on the lips now. And because we're going for a more natural look, I'm not going to go in with lip liner and make a super defined edge of the lip. What I'm going to do is go in with a stain. So this is from Misha. This is one of the Wishstone tint oils. It is a sort of orangey red colour. It can be quite intense, but what I'm going to do is put some onto my hand and then dab a little bit on with a lip brush so that it's a less intense shade. Okay. Mum is like me. We are of the small lipped clan, aren't we, Mum? Mm -hmm. We were not uh, blessed in the lip department, which I was. But we have nice eyes, so it's all right. And this is nice and hydrating, so if you have drier lips. Yeah, that tickles. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Rub your lips together a little. Okay, so we have a subtle but peachy, slightly orangey lip. And now we're gonna do brows and eyelashes. So let's put a little brow gel in. This is 
I like brown pen. gel. Yes, I like that this one. This is a NYX one. Very easy to use. For me personally, I find that the wand is slightly too big for my eyebrows, but that's because I have thinner eyebrows than you. Mm -hmm. And I need to, the coverage for the grey hairs, dear. Yes, if you have grey hairs in your eyebrows, a tinted, a tinted gel is helpful. Hmm, very helpful. Okay, just turn towards me a little. Get this eye done. Mascara. So mum has this mascara, the lash extender from number seven, and this is a uh, brown black. And you've always preferred a brown black, haven't you? I have, yes. Why well, is that? I, I think it looks softer. I have used black when I've had a freebie, and uh, you know I'm not going to waste anything. Yeah. But brown black is is something I generally have used for years. I've never used this mascara before, so I'm not sure what it's like. But... I haven't used it either. It's just it was a freebie. I haven't used it yet. And this is a tip Mum taught me. If you're applying mascara on someone else, if you actually stand behind them, you have a bit of a better idea of what's going on with the eyelashes. <laughs> you certainly do. It's hard putting mascara on other people though. Mm. Particularly when you're worried about poking them in the eye. <laughs> I find you get much more control if you're behind them because they also can't see you to blink. Yeah, it makes them a bit less nervous. It's a bit more comparable to applying mascara on yourself when you stand here, I think. I think that's right. I'm trying to work it into the base of the lashes without poking you. Need to blink, Faye? Oh, whoops. I just put makeup all over your face. Whoops. Never mind, it'll dry. Okay. We've created a disaster. <gasps> You we have to solve that. We yeah, that's not. I'm not sure that's going to be fixable. Well, let's just let it dry and let it f uh, completely. I know. I, yeah, I know that. There's so late. much of it on you that I don't think we're going to be. Able to... Let's wait and see what happens. Yeah. You said you need to blink, and I was like, okay, and I panicked. You might have to have a short intermission. Let's get these corner ones a little bit more. I've got some mascara on your eyelid as well, over this one. Like I said, putting mascara on other people is hard, but this can happen to anybody. We'll just we'll just go num 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 num. Let's dry, do, and then um, when it's completely dry, we see um, what this one, this side that I got on here. It, I tend to use a baby bud for flaking it off. This works really well though. It's like it? I just got all that off there. No Fantastic. Problem. Okay, that might need to leave a little. A little bit more time to try. We're going to leave it a second just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that, you can turn it nice. into a beauty spot, say. Um, it's not a spot though. It's like a whole line. No. Right. Um, see, Mum can't see herself. No, look, I can't look, see look, myself. Look. Ah, yes. <laughs> it's like a whole. The whole mascara one just went on your yeah. face. Yes, I'm thinking adamant, stand and deliver. We could actually do the slashes. Don't know whether I've ever saw that. Stay Can we get my brush? Oh, it's working. It's working. We're losing a bit of concealer in the process, but we're getting there. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna call that as good as we can as good as we can do it there. <laughs> That's fine. Would you like to put some on your own bottom lashes? With this mirror, I think that's I think that's probably safer after what I just did. I always use the very tip and yeah, run it along the bottom. You've got your eye left, your eye there. I think it's sadly inevitable sometimes. Also, when you have a new mascara that you've only just opened, that is quite wet. Yes, like, mascaras definitely. are always better when they've just like dried out the smallest amount. You know, mm. I'm not sure I, I like it's this a brush. Weird wand, it's a really it? weird wand. I I certainly would. Not really go out and buy that. It was free. I'm using it. 
I don't even remember what make it is. Was it number seven? It's a number seven one. Oh, I remember. It's the over 60s freebie afternoon. Yeah. Never one took a gift horse in the mouth, are we? Think? Right, shall we charge you up this one? Because you've got a bit under your eyes as well now. We're both making messes with mascara today. Um, uh, baby bud. No, 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 Okay. These are better. Get dry enough. Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong end. <laughs> that wouldn't be much use. Okay, I think. Are we there? That you are. Are done. Wow. I think I need to get my bunny ears off. <laughs> you saw what I click on the other side. Oh. Right? Um, I might need to just blend out the hairline a little bit because there might be a little bit of foundation up in your hair. The problem with grey hair as well is that if you get makeup in it, you can see it. That's why I had all those clips in, trying to keep it out of the way. Inevitable. Let's just let's just pull it pull it forward, Faye, and what do you think? I rather like this. I think this powder is slightly weird with the ring light. I mean, do you think, I think so? I think it's just at certain angles with the ring light I can see a little bit of sort of weird there is there flashback is back under the eyes oh, I don't know I think I think you know I think I'm happy with that thank you darling oh, you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> okay everyone that's everything for today I hope this gave you a little bit of distraction in this very crazy situation that we're in right absolutely. now absolutely and think about going on the web and donating to look good feel better it certainly made me look good feel better and I don't have a problem so think of those ladies who are going through chemotherapy even now and hopefully in the future we'll be able to attend a look good feel better um makeup party okay okay, okay. thanks everyone bye bye